Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Working Horses with Jim. I'm Brenda, and this is Jim. And we are at Paul Smith's College, um, their land, and we have just had a snowy drive down here um, this morning. And as you can see, the world is changing here with some snow. Jim said if he knew it was going to be quite this snowy, he probably wouldn't have headed out, headed out this morning, but it wasn't snowing in our house. We have snow on the ground, but uh, it had stopped overnight. I mean. <laughs> Ladies checking everything out. Um, Jim's going to talk to you about what he's doing different as far as trailering the horses, but Lady almost knocked over the water supply for today. Hi, everybody. Well, we've got a few changes here this morning. Um, so the way I've been hauling my horses is before now is I've been just harnessing them up in the barn and loading them into the trailer with Bill up front. Then I shut this door and I put Lady back here. And that's working okay, but it's actually a 50 minute drive up here on a good day. Today it was even longer than that because it wasn't a good day. The traffic was terrible because of the, with, because of the snow. Um, a lot of days like this, I probably won't even log. I have other stuff to do at home, but uh, if we wait till we have perfect weather i'll never be logging because this is this is winter in the north country and we get days like this and uh, so we have to work on some of these snowy days so anyways i decided i wanted to have a do it a little bit different because it's such a long trip for them if they didn't have to wear their harnesses back and forth i'm sure they would appreciate that um, so also when my harness is on my horse i can't back my horses out of the trailer and as it gets colder, if they're both in the front, they'll stay warmer and more comfortable. And it's a tighter fit, so they actually ride better in the trailer because they're tight together. So they don't have any sloshing moments, I guess you could say. They kind of a tight fit and they stay, they ride better. So um, that's why I decided to do this way. Um, I've not, actually never done it this way before, but I think it's going to work out fairly well. Uh, although I may change my mind. Um, but I know that when I have a horse in the front, or in the back, and I needed to back them out of the trailer. They can't back out of the trailer with the harnesses on. Um, so this might be a good fix. So I am going to, um, also I have my, I have five gallon buckets here for water instead of my big barrel that I normally would have. Um, that is just too big and bulky and it, I usually put it up front and there's just not enough room for the horses plus the barrel. So uh, these five gallon buckets work pretty good. Um, they're just, these are tractor supply buckets, but they have covers on them and we've gone before at runnings and whatever. And that really works good. And generally in the winter time, my horses don't drink a lot of water. Um, actually a lot of times five gallons is, is all the drink for between the two of them. So I may, I may or may not bring two at a time. We'll see. So anyways, let me get Bill out of there. Bill can still turn like he normally does and, and walk out. Um, and then I'll, then we'll pull the blankets off and get them harnessed up and get to work. Um, another little tidbit about this particular job. Um, I checked my phone and the elevation where we live, which is, um, it's, it's 70 miles from here actually. Um, it's a long ways for us to travel. Is that right? No, I took it, no, 35 miles, I'm sorry. 35 miles from here, it's a 50 minute drive. Um, but the elevation is only 560 feet, I checked this morning. When I got up here just now, I looked at my phone and the elevation is 1,780 feet. So there's a difference of, what, 1,300 feet in elevation. So that's why so often there's no snow down where we live. We get up here, we have snow. And that's gonna happen a lot. Yeah, they just get a lot more snow okay. than we do. Hey. 
Ayo. Guys, enjoy your ride a lot more since you didn't have your harnesses on. It's been several days mm -hmm. since we've worked. I think, uh, oh, you caught on. Oops. Okay. It's been several days since we've been here. I think we worked on Monday. No, we didn't work Monday. And then I worked Tuesday. Didn't work Wednesday and Thursday, so actually I've only worked one day this week. So has the trucker gotten logs out of here yet? Not on this job, no. I have like four loads here now. So here's one pile. And then there's more up there. I'll show you later because he's about ready to harness these horses. So you had to get these new hooks on here and stuff so yeah. you could hang them up. Yep. Me and Andy did that yesterday, worked on that. I'm glad I got a second pair of gloves here today because I think I'm gonna get wet. I think you are too. It's not supposed to be a lot of rain. It's not, I mean, it's only supposed to be one to three inches. But up here, who knows? Well, you did check the forecast, but forecasts aren't always right. I love how the snow muffles all the sounds. You can hear it creaking under the feet, but it just muffles all the noises. It's so quiet out here today. I really like my new harnesses. A lot of people probably would think, well, you should use your old harnesses in the woods and have your new harnesses for when you go to something special or whatever. But uh, 
I guess I'm a little bit selfish. I did not buy these new harnesses so that other people could enjoy looking at them and just show it when they're in public type of thing. I bought these harnesses partially because I personally like to see them in these nice harnesses. So when I'm working in the woods, when I'm working on the farm, whatever, and I'm all alone, I can still enjoy my horses with really nice harnesses on. And so um, I have no desire to just live in the barn and wear old junk harnesses on them and only use these once in a rare occasion. They're gonna be used every day. So now, what? I, I just wanna to say to you, that's, I like, I like that because I believe the same thing about the things in the home. You should use things that you enjoy, your nice things every yeah. day as well because right. that's the enjoyment of life. And right, don't, uh, just, don't just save them for when you have company. Yeah, and then they just use get them. dust on them and, <clears throat> and then you can't use them. Right. Oh, that is so cute. Look at that, you guys. It, they act like they're thirsty, but they wouldn't drink any water right now. It's partially from the, it's actually mostly from the salt, even though they have, yeah. all, they have all the salt they need. This is just kind of like a different salt to them probably. Mm -hmm. So Yummy, huh? Yummy treat. So now I'm going to get the bridles. And this time of year, with it cold like it is, um, although it's not that cold today, it's, uh, I noticed on the way up through, it's like 20, about around, right around 25 degrees, which is not that bad at all. Um, actually, it's, it's picture perfect logging weather. We ha have enough snow here now, so the logs gonna skid really easy. Um, and yet not so much that you gotta deal with snow up to your waist. And we have, uh, the weather is, is such that the ground is pretty well frozen, but it's not really, really frigid cold. But it's still cold enough, so um, my bridles, I will start put, leaving them in my truck so that they're warm. So when I go to put them on, like right now, They'll be warm. I don't have to worry about the bits. The bits will be warm for the horses. I love watching the horses move their ears. They're listening for you to come back. You know, I've never showed this before. Maybe she won't do it right today, but um, Lady is probably my best horse to put a bit in the ma her mouth. And maybe Brenda can catch this. I want to show you guys how good she is at, at opening her mouth. I'm kind of in a hard position because I seem to be, she seems to be up on a little bit of a hill and I'm down in a hole. She's so tall right here. But uh, <coughs> if you watch her mouth, when I go slide this bridle close by. <coughs> oh, that is so cute. Could you see it from that angle? Yes. I hope I got it good on the camera. <sighs> she just opens her mouth right wide and lets me slide it right in. She's also the only horse when you're, um, Cleaning the barns out with a skid steer. She's the only horse I dare to be standing with because she'll stand there and she doesn't care. It doesn't bother her. She doesn't move. The other ones aren't crazy, but she just, I, I feel like I can trust her. <laughs> she doesn't let a lot bother her. When I go to the woods with these two, I just, uh, I take just the, the one lead rope. Hon, wait a minute. Yeah, Look. I know that. I wanted to talk about that. Oh, I oh, use just oh. one lead rope, so so when I'm hitching them up, I will snap her line in right here just to keep her in place. But yes, mm -hmm. look at this. Oh, there it goes. Oh, there it goes. Oh, that's not going to happen a lot, is it? Or is it, it will today? happen a lot today. The reason that will happen a lot today is the snow. It's fairly warm, so the snow is, is sticky. So it will ball up on my shoes terrible. Um, as we get closer into winter, um, this is only November 16th, I think. No, 18th. 18th. And so um, we could, and probably will lose all this snow still, and we could have bare ground for a while, who knows. But at any rate, we will, our next shoeing, maybe not lady, I'm not sure, because I'm not sure how long I'll be using her, but our next shoeing will end up putting snow pads on their shoes and their feet, so that balling does not happen, at least not as much. <laughs> so 
So I'm going to take Bill's lead rope with him in case I need to tie them to a tree. And then I actually have to drive up this trail a little ways. I have a turnaround spot up there. So the two halters, one with the lead rope on, I got a spot right here where I can hang them on the trailer so they don't get lost. <laughs> so I'll hitch onto the cart and then we'll load the cart up and then we'll be ready to go. G. G. Okay, if I... Have you. Oh. Just hold them for a second. I gotta slide the card over. I had to get that out of the way in case the trucker came while I was gone. Cuffs up, but he didn't. Careful. Jailer. G hoop G. Oh, Brenda, why don't you come here for a second? I'm Just give you an idea how much snow we have on this whole job right now, say five inches. Okay. Whereas at, down at our place, we might have two, maybe. Or not even. Or not even. I would guess more like one, one and a half. Ah, ah, step up. Oh, ah. ah. oh, I get all the chains. And while he's doing that, I'll just show you this other uh, pile of logs that they have gotten out. So, do you do that? Are you put them back on every time? Yeah. And if, why is that? Well, if I was at home where it'd be safe, I wouldn't have to, but I'm just concerned somebody might walk up in here and steal them. That is just so weird to me that people steal things from out, out in the woods, you know? But they do, chainsaws and whatnot. This is kind of a spur of the moment thing. Brenda decided to come up this morning and uh, she's gonna go shopping from here. So, so she decided to come up and we have a hard hat for her down at home that we're gonna get her situated with, but we don't have it yet. Thank you everybody for your concern. The more I'm out here in the woods, the more I realize that I need it. <laughs> Ready to go see what the winter wonderland might look like this morning? Uh, yeah, yep. Well, it's certainly not frozen under here. No, it's not. It's soft, soft. I'm surprised actually, because it seemed like the other day um, on uh, Tuesday when I was in here, it was, it was fairly frozen. So when I first come into a into the woodlot and well every day when I approach a tree, I look at that tree and I tell myself where exactly do I want it to go to make it the easiest to be able to get it out with my horses. Now sometimes because of leans and whatnot, I can't always put it exactly the way I want it to go. Here is a tree right here that tends to have a little bit more of a lean down that way. 
Can I try and to get an angle? And you can, but I don't know it if it'll show. It probably won't show, but. So this tree kind of wants to go down the hill like that, but I do not want it to do that for several reasons. And where I want it to go is right up into that opening where all we just have a bunch of small trees over there. So what I did is I cut the notch. And so that notch is heading right for that opening. So what I have to be careful with is, is having my corner over here break off and fall that way. So what I did is I bore a cut right on this side and, and just to make people understand, uh, I am not a professional when it comes to cutting trees. Um, I know there's just so many professionals out there that could tell you way better, explain way better how to do this than I. And I'd, hey, I loved your, your comments even and your critiquing of my cutting. Um, I, I know I have plenty of faults when it comes to cutting trees, it's, it's, but I, I do spend a lot of time studying a tree to make sure I can possibly get it the right way because when you cut a tree down, especially with horses and muff it up and it goes the wrong way it just takes makes for so much more work even if you use a skid and it goes the wrong way it may not take for that much more work but you tend to uh, tear down so much more force in the process so by taking the extra time hopefully i can get this right so what i did is i bore cut on this side here because this is the side that's kind of headed towards so i got this side all cut uh, and i don't people are new what is a bore cut a bore cut is when you cut your notch and then bore your saw into the center and uh, into, into the cut so you're getting this end of the cut cut first and then you leave a hinge back here that you cut last there again i'm not very good at explaining this because i'm not very good at it period but anyways i'm just gonna tell you what i did so that's supposed to hold it in place until you want it to fall over correct? yes it is okay so what i so so this is this is what we call the hinge so you have your notch here and then you have a hinge the hinge just picture as just the regular hinge that's what that's what what it uh pivots on as it as it goes over mm -hmm. so what i did is I, I made a fairly small hinge here and on this other side i'm gonna make a fairly large hinge because i'm concerned that the tree will break that hinge on this side and fall over that way so i'm gonna keep a fairly large hinge here and then I'm going to have my wedges in and cut the, the back piece so it will fall over and hopefully this hinge will hold it and it will go right over. I know it's a little confusing to most people, it's confusing to me. So <laughs> <laughs> anyways, let's, let's give it a shot. As long as you know what you're doing and those signs are over there, so hopefully... Well, the signs do not have to be salvaged. If we break a sign, he told me it's not a big deal. Okay, so, so. you already talked about that. Hey, one other thing, what do you think of my... My new hat with my hard hat. See, I have working horses with Jim. a lot of a lot of years. I use what we have call a uh, a liner, a helmet liner. They make a special helmet liner that actually connects into the into the the, the hard hat itself. Mm -hmm. And I've used those for years, but they're not that warm, and uh, if they're kind of a pain because if I want just a hat, I don't like to wear just them, and they're connected to the hard hat anyway. So with this type of setup, I can just keep my hat on, take my hat off, whatever I want to do. And this particular helmet is really easy to, to change this around. So you just squeeze these and this slides back and forth to get the different adjustment for, because when I have a, the hat on, you can have it a little bit bigger here. Uh huh. So cool. it works pretty good. Uh, yeah, so that's good. I'm glad you feel like that the, that hat is practical too. Yes, we, especially since it's a working horse with a gym hat. Both of them, yes. Both of them are practical. I think we have the hard helmet in our, um, We've got Jim's, the stuff Jim wears logging is in our Amazon store if anybody's interested. Okay, so I'm gonna bore cut this side here and then cut the, the not the, what do they call that? I don't even remember what they call it, but cut the end off there so it flops over. <laughs> I'm such a professional cutter. And tell me where to go. Yeah, um, I think the safest bet is probably, behind. you don't even have to go that far because you can stand behind those trees there. Yeah, I'll stand behind the tree. That should be safe. Then I can be close.
Okay, come here. <laughs> Am I safe to come out? Looking up. So that worked well. Um, I would love to have you guys critique me. Even my friend John from Lamont, by all means. Critique me, tell me what I should have done differently. But as you see, I held a pretty darn heavy corner here on this hinge. The tree wanted to go that way heavily, but because of this corner, it went down there just fine. The signs are way safe right now. Yes. Okay. Now, because of this setup, and especially with this snow, okay, I, I see some one thing here that's going to be interesting because if if I, I can actually pull full length trees out of this job because I have nice straight rows right here, except for right here at this one spot. So there's no way I can hitch onto this tree here and pull it around that corner. It's just too much, too crooked. I can show that to everybody. So what I'm gonna do is I'll cut either a, a 16, probably just a 16 footer by the looks of things, and I'll actually pull it down Maybe all the way down, maybe just down to my one spot where I leave some, and then I'll come back and get the rest of it and take the whole tree down as in two pieces. Mm -hmm. So let me limit up. I'm glad you have your visor on because you always complain <laughs> about, he says he doesn't like to log when it's um, snowing because he gets snow on his nose and it tickles his nose and I always pick on him about that because it to me it's ridiculous all this other stuff that he has to do when he worries about his nose being tickled anyways you shouldn't have to worry about that with a visor do you not so much So I personally am wondering how he's going to deal with this log being up in the air. When he's going to cut it and how he's going to do it. What are your thoughts? I ask everybody what they thought you were going to do, how you were going to pull this out since it's way up high. Like when you're going to cut it and what you're going to do. So I asked them to give me their thoughts on it. Do you want me to give you mine? Yeah, I do. I do want you to give us your thoughts. Okay. Um, one thought I had while I was limiting this tree up is I, I might seem kind of stupid not knowing what the names of these different cuts are but you know I'm not a teacher I don't do this on a regular basis and so many things in life if we do it all the time we don't need to know the the official name for some of these things because um, most of the time it's just us or myself and I don't need to <laughs> explain to anybody what I'm doing but right now when I'm since I'm trying to explain it I should I should uh, know what the names of these things are when you're cutting a tree, the notch, the, the hinge, the, the back cut, and all that stuff. Um, so it'd be more simpler for people to understand. I think it's more important for you to know how to do it than what the names of it are. I think so too. So <laughs> if, that, if that really bothers you, I apologize, but I'm probably not going to change. <laughs> so so what, I'm gonna do, what will I do here? What I'm going to do here is I'm going to come up here with the horses. I'll probably pull up in there and stop. Get a chain on this one butt log right here. And then I'll go back and I'll cut it. Because this butt log, after I cut it, it's going to drop onto the ground and it might be hard to get chain on. So I'll do that first, then I'll cut it. I'll take that down either part way or all the way. And then I will come back. And as you can see, there's a, a dead fall underneath that, um, right about where the 16 foot cut is. So that it's going to be such that the, the rest of that tree is sitting on that dead fall, which is good. So when I come back, I will clean up this bit of brush I have back all the way up to that the remaining tree, put a chain on it, and pull that whole remaining tree out of here. I probably won't attempt to get around this corner because it's just a little bit too crooked. So I'll get down here where I, where it works for me, and then I'll cut off another section, maybe another 16 footer, maybe a 33 footer, who knows. And then I will take that down and 
and come back get the the rest of it. Uh, several thing ha things happened while you were um, cutting the what'd you little, see? little what, what, surprises. What'd you, what'd you see a moose? No, I wish. <laughs> Brenda has never seen a moose. Well, in a car far away, but I'm. There's one near our house, and I was hoping that it would show up, but we haven't Hasn't seen yet. it. Come, come. Back. 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 I'll be right back. Yeah. I cast up. So Jim just moved all the trash that's in the way. It's gonna back the horses up. Turn them around. Huh. 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 Get back. Huh. 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 Get back. Get back. Huh. 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 Uh, see over there. Cheek, 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 cheek. Ha. 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 Happy. 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 See a couple limbs I missed. Hey, hey, bye. Here's a interesting situation. Hey, bye. Bye. Happy. Happy. Oh. Okay, lady's definitely anxious to go. So what I'm gonna do now is swap my roll and I was trying to roll it that one way and I'm realizing now I'm better to go the other way. But I can't get my chain off because it's stuck there. So, no problem. We'll just put another chain on, give it the different roll and Quite confident, help, they'll pull that out of here. 
Back up here. I'm glad you're quite confident they weren't going to run away, too, because huh? they looked like they wanted to. Huh? Huh? Back up here. Back up here. Back up here. Ho. 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 No. Ho. 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 I stop. Ho. Huh? Ho. I stop. Oh. No. Ho. Do a little bit. Ho. Step up. Step up. Ho. Pa. Ha. Ha. Ho. Ha. 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 Ho. Ha. Ho. Ha. Ho. No. No. Can I ask you? No. A Just a second. Ho. No. Ho. Back up here. Lady Ha. Ba pa. Ba. Ha. Ba. Ha. Ho. Ha ba. Ho. Ho. Ha. Ho. 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 No. Ho. Okay, so the first time you knew to stop them. The second time, after you cut the limbs off, when you asked them to go, they still couldn't do it, but you just adjusted the chains. And how did you know that the third time you were pretty sure they would be able to do it? It's one of those things when you work with the same horses for long periods of time, you just get that knowledge. But how, what, um, what was different so that you knew if you just asked them that third time they would be able to do it? Because did you, it, was it the, you readjusted the chain? Yeah, the, the log went a little ways and I knew that we had it. We just had to instill in them the confidence that they could pull it and that's really what I did. And maybe that was it. I didn't even see the log move at all. So. Oh, okay, yeah, it did. So as you can see, we had a bunch of limbs in the dirt. So, um, and also, as you can see, that's not going to swing around that corner. So I'm going to have to cut another piece off it and then come back for the rest of it. And then it should come around the corner, the, the last piece. So I'm going to measure this up, cut it off and come back and get the other one. Nice step. Oh. Happy. Happy. Nice right, step. Oh! <laughs> that was a little wild. Step a little bit. Okay, a little bit. So here's the two pieces. Oh. Happy. The rest of the way is downhill pretty good. Ha, hope. Ha, ha. Ha, ha. Step back, step back, step back. Oh. Step back. Oh. Step back. oh. Map it. Hip. Hip. Nice step. Careful.
Oh, well, this is the end of the video and I hope you guys enjoyed it. And you guys have a great day and we will see you next time around. Bye.